Coding Da Vinci, our first cultural data hackathon in Germany. We launched yes, last year together with four partners, um, the Open Knowledge Foundation Germany, German Digital Library, the Service Center for Digi Digitalization and Wikimedia Germany. And our aim was to explore the potential of digital cultural heritage and we would like to bring it into new shapes, application, enrich the data, interconnect the data and we would like to create new knowledge out of that. So, um, Coding Da Vinci is special because it, um, it uh, uh, has a unique structure. Um, the teams and the cultural heritage institutions uh, can work together um, within 10 weeks and uh, can work together to create great projects um, based on open cultural data. So um, at the beginning of, ten, of this 10 weeks, um, there is a two-day event in Berlin that takes place in Berlin. And um, we want to uh, give the participants and the GLAM institutions more time to present their data sets and to actually work together to uh, get to know each other, face uh, the challenges um, together and then develop project ideas. And after that, we call it the sprint. So um, the teams have 10 weeks time to develop these ideas and projects. And then we come together in Berlin again um, at the award ceremony where uh, all results and uh, projects are presented. Today, or yeah, by now we can say the, the hackathon is in two weeks, so uh, there's not so much time um, to organize it anymore. And uh, by now we have 33 institutions joining us and opening up their data sets, and it's all kind of data. So we have videos, metadata, of course, um, pictures, um, sound files, and uh, in total over 40 open GLAM data sets. So this is why far more than the last year's hackathon um, data sets. And also uh, this year we have quite many institutions joining us and also among them there are theaters who are opening up their data. <coughs> now let us have a look um, at what happened last year at Coding Da Vinci. Um, here you can see some numbers and results. We had 16 institutions, 26 open <coughs> cultural data sets quite a big amount of uh, participants, uh, 150, and 17 projects after 10 weeks' time um, that have been developed. And this is how it looked like. Uh, so the people were coming together um, to discuss, to you know, develop ideas, to interact with each other, to learn about the data, um, and uh, yeah, to create something out of it. And uh, now I want to show you some projects of the last year. Um, all projects showed really remarkable diversity and a high level of technical expertise. So um, quite many teams uh, built mobile apps uh, that you can see on the bottom of the slide. Um, for example, uh, Old Berlin, it's the one on the right side. Um, it's um, an app um, where the users can interact uh, and learn more about the historical development of the city, uh, showing um, pictures of, uh, yeah, Asian pictures uh, of Berlin city, and uh, the pictures are compared to places uh, how and how they look uh, right now at the present time. Um, then we have Ethnoband, um, it's an app where people can join together playing different instruments and forming bands. And uh, there's another one called Zwitscherwecker, it's an app that plays a different bird song every morning and will only turn off if the right bird is allocated to the voice. So it's an alarm clock <laughs> with a slightly different approach. Um, and of course, quite many teams and participants build websites to showcase new connections between various types of cultural heritage data. And uh, there were quite many tools they used. So it's uh, the project on the top of the right side. Um, and um, yeah, the websites uh, showcase new connections um, through storytelling. Uh, they use Time Mapper, for example, um, and interactive visualization, and also uh, map applications to um, 
you know, uh, show the data and the potential behind the data and the information. Um, also, we had um, projects featured hardware prototypes such as the Cyber Beetle, um, augmented reality applications and programmer tools for, again, the developer community itself. Um, and what we also figured out that um, because there was quite, yeah, a lot a lot of time to um, understand the data and to work cooperatively together. The work at the end, so the results have been really sustainable. Um, out of the 17 projects, eight, eight were um, continued in teams um, and um, people were cooperating again with the cultural heritage institutions. Um, five of these 17 projects uh, have left the prototype stage and can be actually considered as um, fully functional applications, which is, uh, you know, quite unique among uh, this field of hackathons. And three projects um, developed even a business plan um, to start a startup. Um, and one is Mnemosyne. Um, and Nemozune was presented at the international EU-wide uh, Apps for Europe competition. And uh, it's actually a project that Knut developed together with his team and uh, the institutions. And uh, yeah, he will tell you more about it. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Knut. And to present our Coding Da Vinci project, uh, I want to explain what this goddess has to do with this sad-looking man. This remembrance stamp, the Olsen twins, and the Italian one euro coin. The pictures will accompany us to the next few minutes. And first of all, Memosyne is one of the 12 titans of the Greek mythology and the goddess of memory. So she's the epony of our project. With our project, I mean Thomas Fett, Christian Broman, Marius Förster, and me. Here's a picture of our team during our bumpy presentation at the end of Coding Da Vinci. But what is the app about? It's an alternative access to archives. We put the moment of poking into the center. This is realized via our app and an installation. The goal is to give Glam's opportunity to give access to their treasures with uh, visitors without that don't have the expert knowledge. To stress out Goethe at this time, uh, you know what you see first, or better, you only know what you see first. That's exactly the problem we wanted to handle, and we came up with some interesting ideas. The most important part is the collage. It is showing the results of the search in the archives and the, uh, the collage is reduced to five results instead of endless lists. So it's like a treasure map to invite users to discover the content. Uh, now let's get to the background. Our project is inspired by the work of A.B. Warburg, that's a German historian who did a lot with, uh, with archives, not digital. Um, and he tried to build up connections with the help of these boards here. He called his work Memosyne Atlas and gave it the nice title Image Row for the Development of the fun Function of Preformative Antique Expression Values for the Visualization of the Eventful Living in Art for the European Renaissance. It's a work he never finished. Uh, so how is such a collage created? Its base is a spe special algorithm. The principle is comparable to hyperlink hopping. I guess you all know the situation that you end up at a place you weren't originally searching for. Uh, by the way, the word algorithm dates back to the name of an Iranian academic and his book about Indian numbers. That's this dude here. And uh, that is how it works. A query for a specific term uh, gives back results. And out of these results, new search terms can be generated. And with this new search term, a new search is established. This procedure is repeated multiple times. 
In that fashion, we try to cover large areas of the archive to find information the user didn't have an idea about. That's the way the collage is created. The more the algorithm is repeated, the more independent are the results from the original search term. We call it relation degree. But because uh, calculatable results are always boring, we wanted to move the user in the direction that he gets some distance into the original search term and the results so that he can discover the unknown. That's why we invented the rotary knob. The more with the rotary knob we can set the level of the search in Memosyne. A higher level means more repetitions of the algorithm, which means that the relation degree is low and the results became more unpredictable. To make the search transparent and give the user the opportunity to retrace the algorithm, we introduced the meta view. Here on the left hand side, we see the results of the search with the original term, and then the algorithm picks five different items to repeat the search, and in these five groups, you can see the trace of the algorithm for each picked term. Our idea is that Glam can, GLAMS can broaden their offers, therefore there isn't only a browser app, but an installation. In this installation, the rotary knob gets a special role. He translates the grubbling in a rotary movement. He wants, as big button that he is, be touched by the user. The station should prompt the usage via haptic. It is a much more interesting access than a simple screen. There are a lot of words, so now I want to show you the app via our video. First, uh, we have the browser app, and here we can uh, type in a search term and control the level. And now it's searching and we are getting some results. Sometimes we are getting an image if we find one, and you can retrieve further information, we are getting them from the Wikipedia API, and uh, scroll in the results, and then you can open the meta view to look up uh, which points were passed by the algorithm worked. Then we have the installation. This is this little box here. We have special buttons for all the actions you can perform on the page. Uh, so, it feels really intuitive to use the app. With a push of the, on the rotary knob, you can start the search, and uh, you can look at all the further information via the buttons uh, that are numbered labeled 1 to 5 at the top of the box. And also, you can scroll uh, in the further information via the rotary knob. At the end, uh, I want to tell you something about the development of the app. We use the API of the DDB. It's a, a project, like Stefan just explained, uh, it's comparable to Upiana, besides that it only has data of German institutions. And after 10 weeks of work on the project, we uh, had our final presentation at Coding Da Vinci, where the whole system broke live on stage. Uh, but nevertheless, we get great feedback uh, from the jury and uh, we decided to continue our work on the project. Now uh, we are coming to the point that we, on the other hand, need some funding, but uh, we also are currently working on some things like uh, extending the prototype to support uh, the European API and Wikidata. And we are also uh, looking for new features to uh, make the app better than it is right now. In addition to that, we are searching for GLAMs who would like to go this way with us and present the installations in their building. And we, our plans are to go live with the app at the end of 2015. Um, 
By the way, all information that we just told you, uh, you can find on our website. Uh, there are also English infos uh, online, so feel free to um, read more about it. And um, also all projects from the last year are uh, on the website and uh, we will release next, year, uh, next week, not year, next week we will show all the data sets that um, are yeah, new um, within that uh, Coding Da Vinci competition. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask and uh, you can always write us an email. Thank you.